Welcome back to Mr. Stewart's Lessons. Uh, we've been making a little bit of a game here, and I guess you could kind of call it a game, but let's be honest, it's a pretty sucky, easy game. Um, because, let's face it, there's really nothing bad that can happen to you. So let's make something bad that can happen to you. How about a bomb? Let's put a bomb in here. So first we're just going to make a new actor subclass. Uh, and in objects, I think it is, there it is, bomb.png, and we'll just call it a bomb. Uh, so what we'd like to have is some bombs laying around, and if you hit the bombs, it'll blow you up. That seems like a pretty good, uh, we'll just put some bombs around here, make this a little bit challenging. Maybe that's a little bit too hard, but that's okay. We can take some off later. Let's save the world so there's some bombs lying around. And so now what we're going to need to do is we need to, obviously right now the bombs aren't going to do anything to you because we haven't put any code in them. So we have to make them do something. We have to make them blow something up. There's two ways I could do this, and I went back and forth on how to do it. One, I could make the car uh, disappear when it hits the bomb, or I could make the bomb make the car disappear. Uh, I'm going to just sort of use it in the sense of uh, the bomb is doing something to the car, so I'm going to put the code in the bomb instead of in the car. So I'm going to double click on here. Um, and something I'm going to do here is... Uh, this is, instead of putting the code in the act method, I'm going to put this in a separate method. I'm going to start doing this more and more. And th this is also really good programming practice. And it's not really necessary here. It works fine without it. But this is something we should get in the habit of doing. So I'm going to make a separate method. I'm going to write private void. Uh, I'll call it explode on collision. You might be wondering why am I why am I put, well let me just explain what's going on private why do we have private because only this particular actor is going to be calling this no other actor is going to be making telling the bomb to explode only the actor is going to be calling this method it's going to be calling it every turn so I can actually put it right up here I can say if I hit if I start to type it and hit control space you'll see the explode on collision method is already there so um, it's now uh, so it's, it's now calling this method, which right now does nothing every turn. So let's make this method do something. Basically, we can use the same kind of code that we used before when we uh, hit the car. When I mean, when the, when the car hit the pizza, right? So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, we, so we want to create an actor, which is a, a placeholder for an actor, like a, a car-sized box that's going to hold uh, the car when we collide with it. Um, and so I'm just going to say actor car equals, um, and then we'll say uh, get one intersecting object. Um, there we go, get one intersecting object, and this, of course, is going to be car.class. To remind you what happens, uh, this, is, this is going to be empty, except when the car hits it. So basically, for most of the turns, it's just going to call this method, it's going to see if there's a car, and there's not, and nothing's going to happen, right? So if, there's, if, if a car's not hitting it, the colliding car is going to be null. Uh, if it is, the car does hit it, then it's going to contain an, an actor uh, object, uh, which contains the actual car. So what we want to do is we want to explode if the car is there, right? And to remind you how that works, we say if colliding car not equal null. So this is going to, so what that means is most turns it's going to run this method. It's going to say, am I colliding with a car? No, then that's it. We're done. Nothing else is going to happen, right? So now what am I going to do? I'm going to say, um, what I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove uh, the car object. So I'm going to say, uh, I can just get the world right here. I can just, um, I don't really need to put the world in a variable necessarily yet. We may want to do that later if we want to make the world do something, but we can always change 
our code later. So right now I'm going to say get world. And so what this is going to do, right, this is going to get the world and it's going to, so now, and this is actually, this is something I should stop and explain what's happening here. When I say get world and I say dot, this is going to become the world. This place, right, this place is going to become the world that we're in when I run it, right? And so if I say get world, now I can do anything that a world can do, right? And and this is this is what this and and this is this is important, right? This is uh, now I can do whatever the world can do here. Uh, and of course, one of the things the world can do is remove an object. And so we're going to tell the remove object, and then we're going to do colliding car. You might wonder why are my variable names so big? Um, so you know. Uh, there's, there's different opinions about variable names. Some people like to make very short variable names. I don't. I like big variable names um, because, uh, oops, uh, the only problem with big variable names is you spell them wrong sometimes because that tells you exactly what uh, the thing is. And believe me, when your program gets big, this is really going to become uh, important to know exactly what a thing is. Um, so instead of just saying car equals get one intersecting object, I'm saying colliding car. Because there may be some other reason I put the car in a variable for a different reason, and I, I uh, don't want to mix those those up. Okay, so um, this, well, this will do it right now, right? This is enough, right? I can compile this. This should, this will destroy the car if a car hits the bomb. There we go. Not the best ending. We'd like a little bit, something a little bit cooler to happen than that, honestly. For one thing, the bomb is still there. I mean, honestly, when a bomb, if the bomb's going to blow me up, there shouldn't be a bomb anymore. Um, so what I'm going to do, uh, I, I want, what, I'm going to use the set image method. I'm going to change the image to something that uh, is a little bit better. Um, and so the, the way you do this, if you want to change an image, this is sort of how you do it. You go here, you click with uh, select click, right click, or click with both fingers, however you do that, and click set image here. And, and then you're going to pick uh, whatever other image you want. Uh, Greenfoot actually doesn't have built in an explosion, uh, an explosion picture. Um, I'm not going to draw one. I could. You could draw one. Um, but if you understand, and, and uh, at some point I'll show you how to import an image, but I'm not going to do that right now. Right now I'm just going to go to symbols. I'm going to pick the skull. Um, and, and so now it's going to be a skull for just a second. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and set the image and set it back to the bomb. So the reason I did that is now when I do this, you see, you see these these scenario images. So what's happened here right now? If I look, and and this is actually useful to take a look at our folder really quick. Um, if I go to, uh, um, to uh, GitHub, um, GitHub, and um, Here it is. And if I look here in my images folder, you can see, right, all those images are in there. And what that means is that the, these are the image files that the, the program currently has to work with now. And so that means because the, the, the program has those to work with now that uh, I can set the image just by doing, putting the name of the file in a string, right? Um, but I have to, it, I have to have made sure that that image is in here as well. Obviously, uh, you can put whatever other image in here you want. If you want to make your own explosion image and just drag it in here and call it explosion.png, that will also do the same thing. If you want to use uh, whatever graphics program you have, um, if you want a sort of simple graphics program that's easy to do, I would recommend uh, the GIMP program, G-I-M-P. Just go to GIMP.org or just search for GIMP, and that's a, that's a pretty simple program. Um, and there's some some uh, some online image editing programs as well if you want to do that. Uh, I'm not going to teach that right now though. So let's uh, let's reset this. Um, and so now uh, what I'm going to do is I so now that the the skull is an image in my images folder, I can set the image. So I'm going to do set image. Oops. And uh, 
So if we click here, there's two ways we can do it, but you notice one of them is set image string. String, so the string is literally a string, just word saying the name of the file. And so the, the file, once again, which we looked at it, it's, um, uh, uh, where was it? Shoot. Uh, the file, just to look again, we'll just remember the file is skull.png, right? That's the file name, okay? So in here, I'm going to say, just say, right? This works, again, because that is in, that is in here, right? That, in, that uh, particular image is in the folder, right? So if you're wondering if you try and do this and you're like, why didn't it work? You have to look in your images folder and whatever image name you're putting in here, uh, you, it has to be in there. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, okay. So let's run this again. Boom. Okay. And again, you could make this an explosion or whatever you want. Uh, in the next, uh, thing, next lesson, I'm going to uh, show you how to um, have a better game over screen as well and also an i1 screen. Uh, we'll do that in a, in a future lesson by changing the worlds. Um, I'll see you in the next lesson.